Hello and good evening. I'm Debbie Kay, Vice President of the League of Women Voters of Portland. Welcome to our education forum. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan organization that works to help citizens make informed choices in elections. We do not endorse any candidate or political party, but rather we give voters the information they need to select a candidate and decide on ballot measures. Membership information is available on our website, lwvpdx.org. It is also available for those in the room at the table in the back, along with other voter resources, such as our marvelous voter's guide. We appreciate support from Metro East Community Media, Paloma Clothing, the Multnomah Bar Foundation, the Weiss Foundation, and the Carol and Velma Sailing Foundation, plus we certainly thank Multnomah County Government for letting us use this boardroom. We are here on the occupied sacred lands and waters of the indigenous Chinookan people. We will never be as effective a steward as they, though we can certainly aspire to be so with everything that we do. If you have not yet registered to vote, the last day to do so is October 16th. Contact your county elections office or register online with the Oregon Secretary of State. Ballots will be mailed beginning October 17th. Tonight, we have uh, the Multnomah County Auditor panel, which we've just completed. We'll discuss Measure 102 on housing finance, Metro Measure 26199 on affordable housing, and Oregon Measure 105 on the Sanctuary State of Oregon. Okay, this will be Measure 105, which repeals law limiting state local enforcement of federal immigration laws. Our League of Women Voters Speaker Bureau member, Carol Cushman, will present the measure. Carol? Thank you. Uh, measure 105 uh, repeals the law limiting the use of state or local law enforcement resources to enforce federal immigration laws or our sanctuary law. Measure 105 is a statutory amendment that was brought forward by initiative petition. The chief petitioners are three members of our state legislature. This is a repeal of an existing law. Oregon's first sanctuary law was enacted in 1987 with a very strong majority of 58 to one in the House and 29 to one in the Senate. The current law was passed with very similar wording in 2017 again with a large majority, not quite as large as it was in 1987. The existing law that we will repeal, and I'm going to read the first part of it exact, and then I'm sort of going to just summarize some of the extra parts. Uh, no law enforcement agency of the state of Oregon or any political subdivision of the state She'll use agency monies, equipment, or personnel for the purpose of detecting they are persons of foreign citizenship present in the United States in violation of federal immigration laws. Now, law enforcement, a law enforcement agency may exchange information with the United States Bureau of Immigration and Customs Enforcement, ICE, to, in order to verify the immigration status of a person if the person is arrested for any criminal offense or to request criminal investigation information with reference to the persons. A law enforcement agency may arrest any person who is charged by the United States with a criminal violation of federal immigration laws and is subject to arrest for the crime pursuant to a warrant for arrest issued by a federal magistrate. 
According to the Secretary of State's office at the time this measure was filed, they were not able to determine a financial impact of the measure. To restate what ballot measure five is going to do is it will make it illegal for the state, county, or city public safety officer to refuse to assist federal immigration authorities in detecting and or apprehending persons believed to be in this country illegally. <coughs> state and local police will be required to assist federal immigration officers in detecting and apprehending persons suspected of being undocumented immigrants. Our immigration history is such that in 1850, fewer than 10% of the population of the US were immigrants. Between 1970 and 2016, our immigrant population quadrupled from 9.6 million to 43.7 million, which is 13.5% of the US population at that point. As of 2014, it was estimated that 11 million people had entered the US without authorization. In Oregon in 2014, undocumented workers were estimated to be 3.2% of the total state population. In then the 2015 numbers, the foreign born in Oregon made up 20, pardon me, 10% of our population. One third of all immigrants are naturalized citizens. One in eight workers in Oregon is an immigrant. Since this is going to, this measure will repeal the state law for sanctuary, it is also going to affect local laws. And so I would like to make a explanation or share with you the rules that are currently being followed in Multnomah County in the city of Portland. Uh, enforcement of immigration and customs enforcement detainers is policy 610 at the Multnomah County and the policy states that the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office primary mission is public safety. It is vital to this mission that community members feel comfortable interacting with members, reporting crimes, entering court, and generally participating as wit witnesses or victims in our criminal justice system without fear of local law enforcement enforcing federal immigration laws. The Multnomah County Sheriff's Office values the work of the United States Department of Homeland Security as a public safety partner, but has no enforcement authority in an active role in regards to federal immigration laws. In all of its public safety roles, patrol, investigation, and operations of jail facilities Multnomah County Sheriff's Office follows state and federal law. As a result, the county does not use agency monies, equipment, or personnel to enforce federal immigration laws, nor do they hold people in custody pursuant to immigration and customs enforcement detainers. The Multnomah County Sheriff's Office has an obligation to enforce judicial arrest warrants, but they lack the authority and members do not enforce immigration and customs enforcement administrative arrest warrants. That will change with this measure. Uh, going to Portland Police, their uh, rules are in directives 810.10 .10. and under definitions a detainer request is a form 1247A 
which asks for the law enforcement agency upon which it is served to contact ICE and agree to secure transfer of a person to ICE's custody prior to their release from custody on state and local criminal charges. Form 1247A is only submitted where the law enforcement agency is holding a person for another criminal charge. Pardon me while I turn the page. Under policy, the Portland Police Bureau is committed to protecting, serving, and supporting all residents and community members of the city of Portland, regardless of their national origin or immigration status. According to the Bureau, members shall interrogate, detain, arrest, pardon me, no Bureau member shall interrogate, detain, arrest, initiate an investigation, or take other official police action against an individual solely on the basis of either of these aspects of their identity, national origin or immigration status. Under procedure, eight. 10.2.1, members shall not arrest a person for the sole reason that they are an undocumented immigrant. And 8.10.3.3, members are authorized to respond to emergency calls for cover or assistance sought by ICE. However, those members shall limit their involvement to providing emergency law enforcement cover members shall not assist in the enforcement of federal immigration laws. Okay, I have some questions for Carol, but as always audience, if you do, we have at least one volunteer ready and probably more if you have some questions on file cards. There's one in the front here, Hata. Okay, Carol. Why shouldn't Oregon law enforcement help U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement when people have broken the law by entering the country illegally? Okay, we have, the League has talked to both supporters and opponents of this measure. And your question refers to why the supporters are supporting this measure. They have listed four primary reasons. If people want to come to this country, they should not break laws to do so. Because undocumented immigrants will accept some standard wages, they undermine the employment of legal workers. The sanctuary law has kept Oregon state and local law enforcement agencies from offering their fullest cooperation to U.S. authorities charged with identifying and detaining illegal aliens. Undocumented immigrants commit other crimes. Okay, let's try a second question, which is why should Oregon taxpayers pay for our state and local law enforcement, enforcement to spend scarce resources to enforce federal law? Okay, with that you are asking what the people that are opposing this law are saying. And those opponents say, passage of Measure 105 could open the door to widespread racial profiling, separation of families, and generate fear even in documented immigrants who might be perceived to be undocumented. Undocumented immigrants work and pay taxes. Passage of this measure would reduce the labor force in Oregon, especially in construction and agriculture. Statistics show that immigrants are less likely to commit crimes than U.S. born people, but passage of this measure could frighten immigrants and prevent them from reporting crimes or cooperating with local police. Can you name the three legislators and other organizations that support this measure? 
you have it handy? Sorry. <laughs> I, I do. I was expecting a different question, but I can. Well, uh, uh, the three the three chief petitioners were Mike Nierman, Sal Esquivel, and Greg Barreto. Okay. Then let's go to Oregon's law enforcement community is divided on Measure 105. Why do some oppose it? Why do some support it? Uh, there is actually a letter that has been written and signed by 16 sheriffs in this state supporting Measure 105. The chief uh, writer, or it comes out under the name of the sheriff from Clatsop County, and has been signed by 15 other sheriffs from across the state. However, as if you look, there is a definite divide into which sheriffs have signed this and which have not in the fact that these 16 sheriffs represent 16% of the population of the state. Um, as far as their reasoning for why they were, were doing it, some of the taking from an article that was written by OPB, that interviewed some of them, and they chose to do an interview with the sheriff from Deschutes County, since it was interesting that in Deschutes County, both the sheriff signed the letter uh, supporting Measure 105. The district attorney has gone on record in opposition to 105. And as far as the sheriff he stated, I endorse a yes vote on Measure 105 to repeal a statute that I feel is in direct conflict with federal law and federal rules of information sharing. And goes on with, I just think rules are rules and saying we need to be in line with the federal government. The DA from Deschutes County, on the other hand, has said that this statutory uh, sanctuary law has worked well for 30 years holding people who commit crimes accountable while also protecting civil rights. Uh, Chief Reese, Reese, Sheriff of Multnomah County, was also quoted in the article saying, our primary mission in Multnomah County law enforcement is community safety. Our mission does not include the enforcement of federal immigration laws. Let me try this. I'm not sure it works. If Measure 105 passes, can the city of Portland sanctuary city law remain intact, oh, I see, to counter Measure 105? My understanding is that the state law will supersede. And so if the state law is repealed, that it, since it says, and now I scan through here, it says no law, law enforcement agency of the state of Oregon or of any political subdivision of the state. And I think Portland is a subdivision of the state. And so Portland could no longer have a sanctuary law, and Multnomah County could no longer have a sanctuary law. OK, thank you, Carol, for trying to unravel this. And thank all of you for the time that you've spent this evening. I also want to thank Metro East Community Media for recording and all our volunteers that you see either with the file cards or behind the scenes for helping tonight. Please check our website, lwvpdx.org, to view all our forms and for TV replay information. For more election information, pick up our nonpartisan voters guide at your local public library, New Seasons Market, or Meals on Wheels Dining Center, or go to Vote 411. Also, please look for information in both those resources for the contested circuit court judge position, which is something we don't usually have. Election day is November 6th. As in all Oregon elections, you will receive a mail-in ballot. 
Ballots must be delivered to an official drop-off site no later than 8 p.m. on Tuesday, November 6th, or mailed back early enough to re arrive by that time because postmarks do not count. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being informed. Please share the information with your friends, family, and relatives and neighbors, and also make sure that they know, as you do, that your vote is very important. Thank you. Thank you.